I just wanted to update you guys because I started reading Magnus Chase last night and a little bit today, but I got as far as chapter four of Magnus Chase. And so far, so good. He kind of reminds me of Percy a little bit. Like, I don't know if anybody else felt this way reading Magnus Chase. He seems like kind of as sassy as Percy, but like a little bit more bratty. <laughs> If you know what I mean and like not bratty in like a spoiled entitled way because they introduce him and they talk about how he is homeless because his mom died and everything so I don't think he's entitled by any means but he's just probably so jaded from the world that he has that like spiky edge to him and that's why he comes off a little bratty so yeah not that it's a bad thing i do like the tone of his pov so far and like his inner thoughts and stuff so it's not too bad i would have to say it's like percy well there's so many point of views that have happened in heroes of olympus so maybe it's not fair okay minus heroes of olympus if we're talking about like percy jackson trials of apollo and magnus chase i would definitely say percy jackson is the best pov inner voice monologue then magnus chase and then Apollo. And I haven't read the Kane Chronicles yet, so I don't know where that's gonna end up. Yeah, I do like it. Apparently, Annabeth is Magnus's cousin, so that's interesting. I, it really makes me wonder what the timeline of this is. I think it's like maybe during Heroes of Olympus because I vaguely remember Annabeth needing to go to Boston to help with a family thing, which I think is the whole Magnus Chase situation, so I don't know. And if Magnus Chase is about Norse mythology, does that mean Magnus is Thor's son? I don't even know. We're going to figure it out. It's like 500 pages though, which I'm shook. I'm so shook that it is 500 pages because what are we doing with a 500 page book? I mean, I guess we have a lot of ground to cover because it's only three books in the series, but oh my God, what the heck? It is what it is, I guess, but we're going to trek along. I will update you guys as we go. Oh, I'm recording on my new phone, by the way, too. So hopefully it's like less grainy because the last few times I've done like reading vlogs where I am recording on my phone, it's been like super super grainy and i'm hoping that's not the case now because i'm upgrading from an iphone 11 pro to a 15 pro so hopefully it's like significantly better because why did i update my phone if it's not significantly better you know you know anyways i will see you guys later so i just got done a call back and i think it went well knock on wood that it did i don't know i don't want to jinx it and i think by the time that this video comes out, it'll be long over or like I'll already have known whether or not I have gotten the role, but I don't know, fingers crossed, fingers crossed that I got it. Oh, and also too, do you know what's crazy? So I'm on the East Coast and today there was like a 4.8 magnitude earthquake and it's crazy because I did not feel it, okay? I was in my closet playing around with the batteries for my lights, making sure they worked or not worked and just finding equipments for the callback. I didn't feel a single thing, but my roommate apparently was calling my name and she felt it and she was like scared and all that, rightfully so because an earthquake is no joke. But yeah, apparently there was an earthquake and I did not feel it a single bit. So I don't know what that's about. Yeah, that happened, which is kind of hmm, a little bit weird timing wise, just because the eclipse is happening on Monday, so. I don't really know what that's about. But anyways, I just want to give you guys an update on Magnus Chase. So I've gotten to the point where he dies. At first, when I was reading the part where like he he's like in Valhalla and like in the hotel, I was like, no way. Like they're gonna send him back, right? Like you're joking, right? And no, they were not joking. He's actually dead. They show his clip on how he's gotten to Valhalla and why he's like honorable enough to be in Valhalla and whatever. And we find out his Norse god dad, which is Faye. I cannot believe I'm already forgetting this. I'm recording on my phone, so I cannot even look it up. Editing me will put it somewhere over here. I'm pretty sure it's Faye or something like that. The god of fertility and stuff, and he has a twin. That's his dad. And apparently it was like a setup because Sam was told to pick him and like be his Valkyrie or whatever. So that's interesting. And then now we're kind of like learning the ways of Valhalla. You can technically go back to the 
Midgard Earth realm because Boston is apparently the center <laughs> of Midgard, which I think is kind of funny, but okay. Apparently the world tree is there. So that's one thing. And then I now understand why there's a side book called The Nine Worlds because they kind of talk about it. So I kind of do want to read that after I'm done the Magnus Chase series. Or maybe I'll read it after the first one. I don't really know. To be quite honest, I'm not quite sure the reading order of when I'm going to read any of these side books anymore. But yeah, it's been good. It's been interesting. It's like very different than the Greek and Roman customs that we see in the Percy Jackson series, as well as the Heroes of Olympus and the Trials of Apollo. So it's nice jumping into a different mythology. I'm not really familiar with Norse mythology mythology like that like I only really know the basics of like Thor Loki and Odin and just because Thor and Marvel <laughs> so that's why but outside of that I don't really know much about Norse mythology so it's been nice to learn about it through Magnus Chase I don't know Magnus is like not annoying so that's great love to see a non-annoying <laughs> point of view I like Sam so far Thomas Jefferson Jr. is cool X is cool I like them all the characters are cool so far who really knows what any of it's gonna be I don't know Anyway, I'm only like 25% of the way through. 26. I'm 26% of the way through. It just feels like a very long book. I'm only 127 pages out of 500, which is not that much, but we're gonna aim to get this done sooner than later. I'm not gonna put a time frame on it because I've cursed myself too many times doing that. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do that. I'm gonna read more of this later today, I think, probably tonight. So I'll keep you guys posted then. I just wanted to give you guys an update on Magnus Chase since my video is currently exporting and that's gonna take apparently 47 minutes. My sneaking suspicion is that it's gonna take longer. Not that it's gonna be like a 47 minute update or anything longer than that, but anyways, I just wanted to give you guys an update. That's all it was. So I got to the point where Magnus leaves Valhalla and he's reunited with Blitz and Hearth and they end up finding out who Capo is, like their Capo, their literal head, which the name of the guy is slipping me. But that's the guy that is like, he was a part of the trading thing with the elfin people. I think the elfin people. I might be getting details mixed up, but he was the one with the head cut off during that exchange, Odin ended up reviving him with the water that waters the tree of life or something like that. So he has like vast knowledge and he, they've been trying to protect Magnus from dying, but now like plans are changing. And honestly, I forget what they have to do. I think I have to remind myself when I start reading it again. But Sam the Valkyrie, ex-Valkyrie now, she is chasing down Magnus essentially, I think to like reclaim her spot in the Valkyrie because they kicked her out because of him. So they're gonna go on this quest to, you know, find the sword, reclaim her honor, all that good stuff. And yeah, I don't know why it's escaping me. Today has kind of been a long day to be quite honest. So maybe that is why, but so far so good. I don't mind this book at all. It's just really long. I don't know why it's so long. I don't think it really needs to be so long. In my opinion, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I don't really think it needs to be 500 pages. So I feel like I'm like kind of struggling to get through it. Like it's reading fast, but then every time I look at the percentage, I'm like, oh, I only moved one percentage forward after like three chapters. Okay, that's a little weird. So yeah, that's my only gripe with this. But other than that, I really do like it. We get reunited with Annabeth again because during like their time before they meet up with Sam, they're going back to his dead body and they're trying to find the sword and Annabeth is there. So Annabeth kind of knows like something's going on with him, but I'm pretty sure Annabeth is assuming that he's a Greek god. So that should be interesting. They are probably going to talk more about it. It'd be interesting if he like ended up going to Camp Half-Blood, but I don't know if they're going to do that. So 
we'll see where that goes but they do kind of like tease it so i don't really know i'm just here for a good time not a long time apparently but even then apparently i am here for a long time because the book is so freaking long so who really knows but I do like it. I really don't know where they're gonna go with the other two books, to be quite honest. I feel like this could have been like a one-off thing, but it is what it is, I guess. I really don't know what else they're gonna do with the rest of this book. I mean, obviously they're gonna find the sword and they're gonna figure that stuff out, but yeah, I'm just here to vibe. That's all it really is at this point. So I will update you guys once I read more of it. I'm gonna get reacquainted with what their quest is i'm reading a couple other books at the same time so that's why some details are slipping me so that might be my fault for overloading my brain with too much information by reading too many books at the same time so it is what it is gotta do what i gotta do you know what i mean honestly i feel like lately i've been like kind of doing a lot but also not a lot at the same time and like also i want to pick up another hobby like i want to pick up crocheting but like what am i doing i already have so many things going on so i don't really know what's gonna happen we'll figure it out but i'll update you guys probably when i finish the first book just because i don't think there's like enough happening chapter to chapter to really update it so like unless something like crazy happens i will most likely just update you guys by the time i finish this book so I'll see you guys whenever you'll find out whether or not I finish the book or it's another update but yeah let me know also too if you guys like getting more like update to update sort of thing or you just want to hear like whole book thoughts and you just want like three chunks of the video to be like book one book two book three you know what I mean let me know what you like also let me know if you like seeing any of like the b-roll and stuff i don't think i want to add it i think i just want to test it out and to see if like update to update to update works i don't really know but we'll see anyways i'm gonna stop yapping <laughs> and i will see you guys whenever the next update is so i finished reading magnus chase the sword of summer which is the first book in the magnus chase series and i ended up giving it a three out of five stars not saying it's bad it's not bad but like it just wasn't my favorite okay and to be quite honest with you i still like in the beginning of reading it i thought it was a little too long it was 500 pages why are we reading 500 pages of a three part like a, out of a trilogy why are we doing that and after finishing this i have to agree why was it that long? I don't think it needed to be that long. And I really just don't like books that are too long when it could have been shorter. You know what I mean? So that's where I'm at. It's not that it was a bad book by any means. It was not a bad book. It was interesting. I don't really read much about Norse mythology at all. So it was cool seeing like the different parts of Norse mythology and how Rick was able to incorporate that with a new character. Magnus as a character... A lot of people were saying in the reviews I was looking at for people that did not really like the book, they thought that Magnus was just literally Percy, but Norse mythology. Like they just thought it was Percy's tone of voice and his attitude and everything like that. And I kind of have to disagree. I think Magnus feels different than Percy, but I can understand and I can see how people thought they were like very similar in their point of views and how they like talked and had attitude. I feel like, yes, they are both sassy boys. And maybe I'm a little bit biased because I really like Percy as a character. I think Percy is one of my favorite characters in all of his books that he has so far. But I think they're different. Like they feel very different. I think the fact that Magnus lost his mom at such a young age and then he was homeless and then he just kind of had to learn how to fend for himself and he didn't really have the guidance. I feel like Magnus just has this edge to him, this jadedness to him that's a little bit different than Percy. Also, Magnus is starting off at an older age than Percy. Like we follow Percy when he was 13 years old and the sass on that boy was so astronomical, but in the best way possible. But in a way that like is very fitting for a kid that young, whereas Magnus, you know, he is quite literally 16 years old. So he is a bit older. He has that like jadedness to him. And he also goes through different things and struggles with different things than Percy does. So I feel like with that, it's just a little bit different in my opinion. And also since the characters are different, like the accompanying 
accompanying people like Sam and Blitz and Hearth. They're all different than the people that Percy interacts with and even within like the Norse mythology gods, Odin, Thor, Loki, they're all pretty different from Greek mythology as well as Roman mythology, which is the point since they are different mythologies. But since that's all pretty different, I also thought that it brought out different elements to Magnus that we wouldn't really see in Percy. So I appreciated that there were times where it felt like it was dragging on a little bit. So sorry. I'm so sorry if this is like your favorite book, but it just, I don't know. I don't know. Like it was just too long. I just really did not like how it was too long. So for that, I gave it a three out of five. It, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't my favorite out of the series. I am gonna read the second one, not right away. I have other books that I need to read, that I want to read first. So I'm going to do that and kind of rotate them out throughout the rest of this month. It's April right now. So that's what I'm going to do instead of just doing back to back to back Magnus Chase. So this might take a little bit longer than normal, but if I'm being quite honest with you, I really don't want to read another Magnus Chase book right now. Like I'm just not in the mood and I think it's going to put me in a slump. So I might read it in a week or so. We'll see how it goes with the other books. It just took so long to read, honestly. But I'm really hoping that the next two books are not this slow, especially since we kind of know like the ins and outs of what's happening with Norse mythology in this world. I did think it was pretty cool though how Annabeth is Magnus's cousin. So, you know, all the mythology gods and stuff are you know, interconnected somehow. I'm interested to see how Cain Chronicles intermingles with the rest of the mythology gods and stuff. So I think that will be interesting. Also, they mentioned Jason Grace, which he died in the main series. So it, are they going to bring him back and have him like come through in Valhalla and then go about it that way? I don't really know, to be quite honest. I don't really know how they're gonna do that. It would be cool if he came back through this and came back through Valhalla, because technically he is dead, but he comes back. And it would be cool to see like more crossover with Norse mythology and the Romans and how that mixes, especially since Annabeth is kind of in the know. So it would be cool to see like Magnus and Annabeth be like, what is happening here? Because Annabeth has an inkling on what's going on, on with Magnus, but Magnus has no idea that Annabeth is a demigod. So I think it'll be cool to see Magnus be like, wait, Annabeth, what are you doing here? And she's like, I told you. I told you I would understand you more than you thought you would know. So I don't know. I think that will be cool. But let me know, guys, if you guys like this series so far. What's your favorite book in this series? I mean, I won't see it until after I've read all of the books, but let me know. Anyways, I'll update you guys whenever I get to book two, so I'll see you then. <laughs> I just got done reading Magnus Chase, The Hammer of Thor. I'm about to eat some mush because I'm hungry. I've like barely eaten today. <laughs> so don't mind me while I do this. I just got done reading the second book in the Magnus Chase series. And I gotta say, so I I guess I liked it better than the first one technically. There was a lot more elements to it and since we already know the characters, it was like, I guess a lot easier to follow. You know what I mean? Cause like we already know the characters, we already kind of know like the general basis of what's going on. There's like a couple things here and there that we learn about, about like Norse mythology, but I mean, it's pretty similar to the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus where it's like we learn as we go along. But it literally, I'm not even exaggerating. I'm going to pull it up right now. I'm pretty sure I started this in April and I'm just finishing it now because I was literally doing it for a 24 hour reading vlog, which I don't. This It's going to come out after this video, so keep a lookout for that. But literally, the only reason why I, I pushed through was because of that. Otherwise, I would have probably just read like a couple chapters here and there. And that would have been that. Which is kind of annoying 
for me personally because like I don't like sitting on books like that but I mean it is what it is yeah I started it April 18th and finished it May 11th which is like almost a month later <laughs> it started picking up I have to say around like the 65 70 percent mark like it really picked up once they realized what Loki was doing with the sword and the hammer and the marriage of Sam and all of that, like once they figured that out, it started to pick up. It also picked up too, like even more once they were about to like implement the plan and like they're preparing Sam to get married to the giant and also to go visit Loki and like him get breaking free and all that stuff. So that's when it really picked up and that was around like the 75, 85-ish mark. So I don't know. And then... Of course, at the end with the cliffhanger of Percy. Of course, I'm going to be invested once you implement that in there. But it's just kind of annoying that that's what really brought me in. Instead of just like being interested from the start. Something about these books are very, like very slow. It's a lot of build up. And normally that's fine for me. But I think for me, since one, I'm not invested in Norse mythology like that. So I really don't have like any like anticipation for anything because I literally don't know that much about Norse mythology. So going into it, I'm like, okay, throw whatever you want at me. I don't care. Like it, it is what it is. Two, the, it's kind of long, actually. The, let's see how long this is. This is like 459 pages. That's a pretty long book for a middle grade YA type of book like this. So it's just like, that's a lot. And for most of the book to be building up to something like that, I'm like, I don't know. And also too, since this is like one of the side spinoff series, I'm really not that invested anymore. Like, of course, of course I'm gonna read it. And of course I'm still interested in reading these books. But like, since so much time has passed since I initially read the Percy Jackson series and like, I'm not reading this with each release. So I'm just like reading it as I go. So I'm like, Ugh. Like, I feel like I'm postponing the books that I want to read in order to read this series. So that's also kind of putting me into, like, slump territory. So, like, I don't know how fast I'm going to get to the third book, to be quite honest with you. I don't really know. Maybe this will release in June. I don't know. Who really knows at this point? Especially because I'm working on another series to get through. So I don't really know, to be quite honest. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I love Sam. I love Blitzen. Love her. Love them all. Overall... It was fine. It was a fine book. <laughs> I mean, I like this better than the first one, so it is what it is. I'm gonna start reading this, the third book, the third and final book, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next month. I don't really know, but I'll update you guys whenever I start reading it, and yeah. So I finished Magnus Chase, The Ship of the Dead, so that means I finished the entire series, and I... <laughs> I don't even have words right now because I feel bad because I didn't like the book, but I think there were so many different factors that go into it, which makes me question whether or not, like, if I like the book or not, you know what I mean? Like, in this moment in time, I didn't really like it, but it makes me wonder, like, if I read it in a year or something like that when all these circumstances aren't happening, if I would still feel this way, you know what I mean? I just feel like... It's just one of those things where I just didn't really like, and I still don't really like, Norse mythology. There's nothing wrong with Norse mythology, but I just feel like it just doesn't pique my interest in the same way that Greek and Roman mythology does. And even with the King Chronicles, Egyptian mythology piques my interest way more than Norse mythology. So even as I'm reading through the King Chronicles, like I feel like I have a little bit more interest than I do with Magnus Chase, which is kind of unfortunate, but I think that's just what it is. And given the circumstances of that subject matter, I think this is as much as I might like it, potentially. Maybe I'll revisit it in the future and let you guys know, but as of now, I didn't really like it that much. I do like the camaraderie though in the books itself like I do like the relationship that Magnus has with Sam and Alex and TJ Mallory Blitz all of them like I think it, it, the camaraderie that they all have with each other is really nice but I just did not vibe with it as much as I would have liked to especially towards the end like the last 
book with the major plot point being Loki and all that stuff. Like, I just feel like it. I just didn't care that much. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I just felt like the, the stakes were a bit low for me. And then on top of that, just like real life circumstances, like I just wrapped a two week filming session, like project where I was filming for two weeks for features. So like on set, I read a little bit here and there, but it was kind of hard to focus because like, you know, we're shooting and then I'm also like, you know, spending time with my castmates and all that stuff. So I didn't really feel like reading it then. I ended up actually finishing another book which was like only a hundred pages like less than this book so I think that alone was a sign for me to realize that maybe I wasn't vibing with Magnus Chase as much as I thought I was. As far as the series goes I think it was a fine series. I think if I liked Norse mythology as much as I liked Greek and Roman mythology I think I would have liked it way 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 more but I just don't. Those are literally all my thoughts that I have about Magnus Chase. I don't have the brain capacity to think more about it. Honestly, it was kind of putting me into a little bit of a reading slump too. So I just wanted to like get it over as soon as possible at a certain point because like I was making this video and I felt bad like postponing it for so long because originally it was supposed to be like last month that I released it, but I just could not get through it. So yeah, I finished it up. Didn't want to get into a reading slump, so I kind of skim read it towards the end too. Sorry, not sorry, but it just is what it is. Didn't want to slump out, especially because I am getting my wisdom teeth out this week. And by the time this comes out, I've already had them out. And I'm guessing I'm going to do a lot more reading and watching shows and movies while I recover. So I just want to make sure like I'm reading things that I actually want to read and just really listen to the moods of what I want to read. Which is crazy because like I usually am not a mood reader but lately this past year I have been very much a mood reader and forcing myself to read things has definitely started to take a toll. So this is where we're at. It is what it is. Maybe I'll reread it. Maybe I won't. But that is it guys. Let me know if you guys have read Magnus Chase the series. If you liked it, didn't like it, who are some of your favorite characters? What's your favorite book in the series? Let me know your thoughts. I'm open to being persuaded to liking it. So if you want to, you know, give me reasons to like it more, definitely feel free to drop in the comments. I will read it. We could talk about it. And yeah, that is it. I will see you guys next time. Bye!